One. Welcome back, beautiful people of Community Christian Church. I know you guys have been waiting online for like ever. God. That was my Ten fault. Minutes. Ten minutes. Eleven minutes. <laughs> yeah, that was my fault. So, um, if you're online, hello. I, I know a lot of you guys are online because you know there's a bug going around apparently. Hello, Jocelyn. Hello, Dad. Hello, hello. And uh, and whoever else is watching. Yeah. So there's a couple things coming up. As you guys know, there's Tuesdays and Thursday Bible studies. You know, not fun at all. Even though we're in the Book of Revelation. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I only I only come here because I have to. Just get I come here for five. I'd stay here for five hours if you guys let me. <laughs> hey, man. I always say edgy stuff. I think. You're yes, always you always like, hey. Workday May 11th at 9 a.m. Oh, wait, yeah, sorry. Saturday. Don't forget. I guess I'm not going to be here. I tried to be here on yesterday, but uh, everyone bailed on me, even the pastor. It was so sad. Well, yes, but you can't put your trust in men, you know what I mean? What was this I was going to do what I was going to do on Saturday, but I got to go run away out to the desert. The wilderness. Hmm. Yeah, I got to go. What are you going to do to the ceiling? I was going to do the ceiling in there. Uh, and then... Um, and then we got the segregated men's and women's Bible study, May 18th, the following Saturday. And we got a council meeting the following Sunday after that. And then beginning of the, the next month, there should be a potluck. So if you guys want to bring stuff, bring stuff. If you guys don't, eat stuff. You know what I mean? There's always extras. The Lord provides. Amen? Not only physically, but spiritually. Not me. <laughs> and then and then we got VBS actually starting in August. July twenty ninth. So those are the announcements. Man, it's so quiet today. I feel like I'm off because it's so quiet. Yeah. Yeah. Someone's like wooing me on. I always have my woo girls, you know. I can get your woo girl going. You gonna give me my woo girl? <laughs> <laughs> But with that being said, let us pray in and we'll figure out if we're going to do Revelation or we're going to do something else, all right? So while we're praying, if you guys got something and want to share something, don't be scared, all right? <clears throat> Heavenly Father, uh, we thank you for today, Lord, and uh, we thank you for everything that you do for us, Lord. Um, we ask that uh, what you share with us tonight, that it's your will and not ours, Lord. Um, and we praise you that that you allow for that to happen with us, Lord. So, uh, forgive us for our sins and keep our ears open so that we have something to hear, Lord. And uh, that we're willing to work on it, Lord. Not just willing to hear it, but also willing to work on it. Help us strive to be more like you. Uh, bless the study ahead. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Lord. All right. Anybody think Papa's really said while we're there? And you guys are all with me in prayer. Dang, you guys all good. This is such a hard crowd tonight, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please don't tell me I'm in a monologue all night. You can teach the night date. No, I don't know how to teach, bro. <laughs> I'm just a disciple. I'm trying to be like a teacher, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, all in favor to do Revelation continue? Aye? Aye? All right. Like bro. I guess online you guys got to, you know, really commit. Comment. <laughs> Com comment. Did it? Well, now? You. I'll try that one next time. <laughs> I was trying to, trying to catch it, but it didn't stick. <laughs> all right. So, we left off. Where did we leave off, guys? You guys remember? 16? I believe, yeah. Yeah, we didn't touch 16 yet. Right. Oh, no, we did. No, we, did. we talked about how the, the sword was the word of God, right? Mm -hmm. no, I thought we left off in the water, Russian waters. Maybe I was wrong. Oh, you know what? I had to leave. So you guys, you guys went further than I did. Mm -hmm. I had to go take Were we on 19? Um, yes. You guys got all the way to the right? We got all the way to 19, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 So we're going to get into the good... Good stuff. Dang, I wish everyone was here. 
<laughs> this is the best part of Revelation right here. God is revealing. You know? I guess we all have to hear it. Huh? All right. <clears throat> I wanna, I'm gonna read 19, 9 through 20 real quick, and we'll jump back to 19. Okay. Um, so we have to we stay in the context of what, what, what's going on here. So it says, I, John, your brother and companion in the suffering and kingdom and patient endurance that are ours in Jesus was on the island of Patmos because of the word of God. And the testimony of Jesus. Remember why he was there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he got persecuted. Tried to blow him alive. Didn't work out. Then he swam instead. And then invented the spa. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. I'm going to have to get more craftier with these things. <laughs> on the Lord's day, I was in the spirit. And I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet, which said... Write on this scroll what you see, and send it to the seven churches, to Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. I turned around to see the voice that was speaking to me, and when I turned, I saw seven gold lampstands. And among the lampstands was one like the Son of Man, <gasps> dressed in a robe reaching down on his, to his feet. And with a golden sash around his chest, the hair on his head was like white, was like wool, white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were like blazing fire. His feet were bronze glowing in a furnace, and his voice was like the sound of rushing waters. In his right hand he held seven stars, and coming out of his mouth was sharp, double-edged sword. His face was like the sun shining in all its brilliance. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. Then he placed his right hand on me and said, Do not, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead and now look, I am alive forever and ever. And as I hold the keys of death and Hades, write therefore what you have seen. Why, what is now, and what will take place later? The mystery of the servant star, the seven stars that you saw in my right hand and of the seven gold lampstands is this. The seven stars are the angels, and the seven churches, and the seven lampstands are the seven churches. And he drops the mic. Right <laughs> Just kidding. No, he's got more to say. Yeah, right. Teach church. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you're getting big. Yeah. Surprised she has so much uh, control over it. Yeah. All right, so we stop. We stopped at 19. You saying we read 19, or did we stop at 19? We stopped at 19. Okay. Yeah. Jordan said that they stopped at 17. Oh, they stopped at 17. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure we were further than that. Yeah, because we were talking about oh, the fear that lets people. Um, I remember what I had brought up. This I remember just. Yes, that's what I brought up. I brought up 17. So I remember you. At 19? Okay. So 19 it is. <laughs> Guess someone wasn't paying attention online, even though he was here. <laughs> it helps lead it. Right? <laughs> it says, Write, therefore, what you have seen, what is now, and what will take place. You guys get from that. Um, <clears throat> well, it's like instructing them, right? Mm -hmm. Like, as everything is happening, it's like, yo, pay attention, start writing, and continue to write. I agree. Anyone else? Got anything else? Just says, write therefore what you have seen, what is now, and what will take place. I see that like the structure of revelations. Like, he's just gonna talk about what he saw, right? Yeah. And then he's gonna talk about things that are, like he's telling he's talking to the churches that are right there, man. Mm -hmm. And then the things that shall be hereafter, which is the future. Man. Okay. 
That's a home run, bro. Mm -hmm. Home run. Did you already know that? I did already know that. <laughs> <laughs> but I just want to tell you guys, like, I don't know nothing about this book, except like what's coming up in this next chapter, and and the following is probably the most important part of this chapter. I mean, book, not chapter. Um, and that's why I see there, like, what 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 he's about to tell all the churches is what's now. Mm -hmm. So, like, when you read the letters to each of the church. Um, I'm sure. I'm sure if you're listening and you have ears to hear, um, that uh, it's a double-edged sword, like it said, mm -hmm. right? You're gonna be like, praise God, and then all of a sudden you're gonna be like, oh no, like I'm I'm falling into that other category. Mm -hmm. That's what I encourage when we get there. Um, but that's what I see as now, and then what will take place later, right? So. The, the, the part after the churches is when it goes into what will take place after, right? In that time of tribulation, that is what I see. Um, and it's pretty cool when we get there. We always go to chapter four when we're trying to explain chapter one for some reason. Yeah. I don't know why, but it happens. And um, uh, one thing that if you've read the book of Daniel, uh, Gabriel and Daniel are talking about a scroll. And when you, when you punch right into four, it goes, it continues where Daniel left off, like word for almost word for word, like you're in the same scene, like it's like Act Two, you know, wow. uh, and it continues on because what what Gabriel, I think is it Gabriel or Michael, that's one of the two, Gabriel. one one of the Gabriel. probably the messenger guy, yeah, and um, one of the one of the things that Daniel asks is like, well, what happens next? And he, an angel literally tells him, it's not for your time, don't worry about it. And then now, now, with this revelation, mm -hmm. um, now we have what happens with this scroll, yeah. you know. So we'll like read about skills. that when we get there. It's pretty cool. But for now, we're going to focus on the things that are now, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what I get out of verse 19, is he explains the things that are now and the things that will be. We're all in agreement. <laughs> so far, so good, huh, son? All right. It says, verse 20, you guys ready to move on or you got more? Do you want? Okay. The mystery of the seven stars that you saw in my right hand and of the seven gold lampstands is this. The seven stars are the angels and the seven churches and the seven lampstands are the seven churches. Pretty self explanatory, right? Mm -hmm. Like that goes back to where the what John describes when he saw, mm -hmm. right? And the the lamp stands that he's holding is what the is what we are today, right? We're one of those churches. Individually, we're one of those churches. As a community, we're one of those churches. As as a state, we're one of those churches. As a country, as you know, we're, we're one of those churches. Like, we can find flaws in every single way, but I, the most important thing is that when we do find those flaws, that we put it at the Lord's feet. We say, Lord, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I'm going to work at that. You know, that's what that's what keeping in repent. Uh, uh, what's John saying? Producing fruit. Yeah. And keeping with repentance. Yeah, produce fruit and keeping with repentance. Because if we think we know, mm -hmm. like, if we think we know, then we're probably wrong. You know what I mean? If we think, if we, but if we act as if we're doing like in that humble state that we don't know, the Lord, the Lord can use this. You know, stuff like that. So that's what I get. Twenty. Anyone else got anything? What about what? Which part? Says. It says the seven stars are the angels. Of the seven churches. Oh, never mind. I just read it to myself. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I did. What you got? So I know that later on there's a another. How is it on? Um, so Spoiler. You say chapter four. <laughs> In Zechariah, it explains what the candlesticks look like. Okay. But as you continue reading in Zechariah, it speaks of the seven, but then it says it's something different. That those seven di represent something different. Okay. You want to go? You want to take us there? Okay. Zechariah, what? Uh, 
Zachariah 4-2. 4-2? Mm-hmm. <laughs> my, dad talks, my dad talks it's like we talked about the lamp stands were in the holy place in Christ it is the holy place in the spirit we are now the holy place that holy place and he's holding the spirit within us we are the body the holy of holies now I don't know if you want to try to read that much better. But Zachariah, what? Four, two. Jordan says, The churches are meant to light the way to the Lord. The bright beacons of the society. But also, too, when the last time we talked about it, Matt was saying that it's a representation of the fruits as well. The fruits. The spirit. Okay. I forgot. I, I know that he had said, I can't remember in the context. We That's what he was talking about sevens. The seven? Right. And yeah, that there's seven fruits also. Mm-hmm. I think there's more, isn't there? Uh, there, There is. That's yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah there's, there's more. more. Yeah, yeah, like, you yeah. remember what he is? The Something like that. Yeah. 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 Uh, I think some of those fruits, though, that are described in Galatians that you're referring, mm-hmm. some of them one. are some of them are one with each other. They're so that's what thing. we talked about earlier, we saying like the, the the fruits that are like described is the like the embodiment of what what Christ like brings you, right. the abundance of like love and all of that, right? Those are just attributes of what God refines inside of you, you know? Right. Yeah. And and, and that's what. I think what John was describing was the essence of our spirit, what that looks like. Mm-hmm. Right? When he turns around and sees, sees Christ, he's describing mm-hmm. a certain way. And I think it's, it's the way he appears, like in a spiritual context. Kind of, yeah. Because even when we talk about it moving into this, it all kind of like makes something really big, like a big circle. So in four two, mm-hmm. are you guys just referencing that that verse? Or is... So that's what I'm saying. So I went to it because they're describing the candlestick. Okay. Itself. But as you keep reading, at one point the angel asks, um, "Is it uh, Josiah? I think that's who he's spoken. No, Joshua. He he tells them like, do you know what they are? And he tells them, and he ends up telling him what they are." So you're talking about before. You read before or after? After. I, can, after. I continued to read. Gotcha. Yes. So what is and it? at what point does the, does the angel say what they are? So, in six. 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 In six. This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Let's just just read chapter four, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Anyone want to lead it or? Not ready. So the word of the Lord says, "Now the angel, the angel talked to me, came back and walked and wakened me as the man who was waking out of his sleep, and he said to me, what do you see?' So I said, "I am looking, and there was a." Lampstand of gold with a bowl on top of it, and on the stand seven lamps with seven pipes and seven lamps. Two other trees are by it, one at the right of the bowl, and the other is at its left. So I answered and I spoke to the angel who talked to me, saying, What are these, my lord? And the angel who talked to me answered me and said to me, do you, do you know what these are? And I said, No, my lord. So he answered, Said to me, these, this is the word of, of the Lord to to Babel, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Who are you, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you shall become a plain, and he shall bring forth the capstone with shouts of grace to grace. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundations of this temple. 
his hands shall also finish it, then you shall know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. For who has despised the day of small things? For these seven rejoice to see the plumb line in the land of Jehovah. They are the eyes of the Lord, which can scan to and fro to the earth. Then I answered and said to him, What are these two olive trees at the right of the lampstand and its left? And I further answered and said to him, What are these two olive branches that drip into the receptacles of the two gold pipes from which the golden oil drains? Then he answered me and said, Do you not know what these are? And I said, No, my Lord. So he said, These are the two anointed ones who stand beside the word of the Lord. Ooh. You see, oh, that's pretty wild, wild. <laughs> well, That's pretty wild. Yeah. I believe in, 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 in Revelation, does it say that the, the, the seven stars and seven spirits of the Lord? I'm going to say that as well. I think the seven yeah. stars are the angels, right? The seven mm -hmm. spirits yeah. of the Lord. The yeah. seven angels of okay. the Lord who okay. see, they see all things in the, in, the, in the churches, right? Mm -hmm. And I was reading, when I was reading this, when I was reading this. Uh, you want to share with us? When no, you, no, no. It's just he's making no. a lot of sense. Oh, yes, okay. because the yeah, yeah. only like, thing I was like. like I was tripping on it because I, I read this and I, I, I marked down what she's talking about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's not easy, man. <laughs> no, so, so because okay, go ahead, go ahead. So, so when I when I when I read this, I remember the seven the seven spirits of, uh, of, of the Lord, right? Yeah. And then, and I remember that. So I'm speaking about the two olive trees, the two olive trees that are standing by the Lord of the whole word. What I what I, what I got from this was the two anointed ones. What I see here is the Trinity. Okay. What I, I see, see here it too. is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, right? Yeah. You know, the Father never leaves, never leaves heaven, and the, the Spirit and, and the Lord does all the work, right? So that's what I see now to hear. I see, I see the, the Spirit, of the, the two receptor, the two receptor. Well, I say it has a, it has a ball on top. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it drips. It says that one ball, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So that's God. That, that, that's the Holy Jesus. Spirit, the Holy okay, Spirit. Right? This is what I got of the Holy Spirit. The God being the bowl. The oil dripping from the Holy Spirit into the into the into the pipes. Yeah, that's true. Is the Holy Spirit going into the churches? Yeah, right? and then um, and then uh, yeah. So the two receptacles says right here. Where are the two the two olive branches that drip to the receptacle? Two olive branches. You know the olive the olive tree uh, the fig tree is always uh, likened to a priest, right? A priest being the high priest being Jesus, right? So I see that the recept the 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 bowl being the two branches being the Holy Spirit and the Lord. The two pipes, everything that says the, the oil believes to be the spirit, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, it, 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 and to me, it's a picture of uh, to me, it's a, it's a picture of, of the Lord uh, uh, pointing spirit into the seven churches. Wow. Yeah. Wow. The whole, yeah. These are the two who are anointed, who are anointed to serve the Lord, right? Mm -hmm. Jesus and the Holy Spirit, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. um, Orlando did text me. Uh, the seven churches are literal, as mentioned in Revelation one eleven, but it's also also a representing the churches of today the fact the fashion of how they carry themselves and how god how the represent <coughs> how they represent god's word so, uh, the seven angels that are mentioned are one angel for each church yeah i was i was reading somewhere that the that the seven churches back in the back in the time of the when they used to uh, write the letters mm -hmm. on the scroll sent them out I was reading that the, the seven churches that he's speaking of was on the route. Mm -hmm. Was on the route. Yeah. Like the seven churches were on the route. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, right. we also noticed that like the front lines. Yeah, yeah. The front. There's like a map that mm -hmm. showed it, yeah. Right, and so, so the, 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 the churches were on the route. So he's speaking of the churches, but then I also read in the same, in the, in the same literature that they're, they're just, I mean, they said it was, because uh, I was that, I was I was wondering about the seven churches too. Why does it say just seven? Right. Right. You know, we know the number of completion of seven, no right? But I was saying, you know, it, it, it speaks to all, 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 it said that they're different errors. That's what, that's what I read. Okay, I've heard this interpretation. They're different errors. Yeah, right? yeah, I've heard this so interpretation. what I've seen and I said, it makes sense, but, you know. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, we were saying it, right? we were saying earlier that it's more of like a certain spirit, right? Like so, like if you look at the bowl, right, it overflows and each one flows into a different candle. So from that one spirit, one aspect of that spirit is flowing into each of the candles. So like, I've heard the interpretation of the the era, like um, 
like the first letters to the first era of the church, the second. I've, I've read the interpretation, yeah, I mean, and it's pretty interesting. Like the emphasis was the emphasis was the first was the first era, and then the second and third. Yeah, and that's it. It said another word in the era, the, the salvation era, the last era. Yeah. No, we don't do it. That's, that's what I read. Mean. Yeah, I think it's one of those. The, the way I see that like interpretation is right. kind of like speculation, almost like yeah, a, too, yeah. just. Like you can read a lot about the. I love the the early church writings. Like I don't like. I've shown Mike one or two of them. He showed me one of them, and uh, and I love what they say. Like and they say things that were like, dang, I don't think I'm a Christian. To spend with these guys, you know what I mean? Like they're like they're like deep crazy stuff. You know what they go through, and uh, like the ones. And I can see why the first interpretation is because like you sifted through. You know, and like you knew who was and you knew who wasn't Mm -hmm. regarding to like the martyrship. Like you were like back then you had to live or die. Mm -hmm. Right. And to live was to die pretty much. Or run. You know. Or you had to run. Yeah. That's why these churches were where they're at. Yeah, they were where they're at. Right. And it expanded it. And and so like I I, I understand that uh, that. that interpretation it makes sense because if you follow the next you read that era of writing you know that's where i think the second era is when they put the bible together right because before um it was just letters that everyone had and they considered them scripture right they were just letters before but then then they got together and they formed the, the bible and that's when the second era starts stuff like that uh, i've I read a lot about the the and, and but i think to be more in path of what's going on with the first chapter, you know, describing the way that it looks, it's from a spiritual sense because when mm-hmm. when we're looking at when we're looking at uh, when John's describing Christ, and you go white uh, white hair, white as snow, right? And then people go, okay, that's the purity that that we become when when we live our life in Christ, right? We, we live to serve one another, right? We're not there to harm each other. So you become pure in, in doing that, right? And then so on and so forth, right? And then the double-edged sword is the word, right? It, it cuts you, it cuts, it cuts your enemy and it cuts yourself, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And it's not to be well wielded to, you know, strike your, your, your neighbor down, right? Because we're all in the same game, right? <laughs> You know, yeah, we're just trying to get more people involved. I agree. It's it's it's, it's, it's all spiritual. Yeah. The Lord says it right here. The Lord says uh, in, in in John six sixty two says uh, he, he says what then if I told you you see the man ascending where he was before it is not the spirit who gives life to this prophet. Let the words that I speak to are spirit. So we know that everything that teaches us is spirit. Hey, mm-hmm. you got it, bro. I, well, I agree with you. You know, <laughs> I don't know if you got it, but I, I'm on the same page as you are. You know what yeah. I mean? So everything we see is spirit. I believe everything is spirit. Yeah. You see that the face value is spirit. I was looking right here, if you don't mind. Yeah, go this ahead. This is right here, one of these two branches. And over here we see in, in, in chapter 3 in, in Zechariah 2, it says, Oh, uh, here Joshua, the right priest, you are the companion who sit before you. It says, For they are a wonderful sign. And it says, For behold, I am bringing forth my servant, the branch. And uh, the branch mm-hmm. So the branches, the, 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 the oil dripping into the, uh, the branches, we know that the spirit. And we saw the Lord said, I'm the wine, right? I'm the true wine, right? Right. So it's we like get it grafted branch, in. Right? Yeah. Isn't there a saying about like an olive branch? It's like a, an extension to somebody for help? Oh, I think you're right. Yeah. I think there is some type of saying that's saying mm-hmm. that. Um, Orlando did text uh, in all of chapter 2 and 3. I think he's talking about four boys or not. Um, that's seven shows, churches. Yeah, it shows how Christ speaks to the seven churches yeah. of then and today. Yep, mm-hmm. I agree. And that's that part in verse 19 where we said, I'm going to tell you what is now. Mm-hmm. That's that now part. Mm-hmm. And then I will tell you what will be. And that's the the part after the seven churches. Mm-hmm. It's even like, I mean, like right when you say that, it's like even crazier to a testament of like God's words never change. Right. Like, <laughs> Actually, I think the verse of the day is Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Mm-hmm. Hebrews. 13, 8, you know? I saw that today, I was like, oh, that's pretty bomb. You know? <laughs> My dad commented, spoiler, if you look at each letter to the churches, they use a portion of the description of Christ in chapter 1. Right, and that's why we go back to the Spirit, mm-hmm. right? Because what ways described in chapter 1 are like the fruits of what we would look like when we live in Christ, right? Mm-hmm. 
Pretty crazy, huh? Yeah, we were talking about the the brass, the brass feet, and yeah, the brass feet. The what? The brass, brass feet. feet. Oh yeah, the the, the feet. The, yeah, the feet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like on Thursday, Tuesday. I was or was it Tuesday? Yeah. Tuesday. Sorry, my days are just blending into one. Um, <laughs> Gotcha. Um, what's it called? On Tuesday, I was so emphasizing on the study. If you guys, were, if you were watching, um, I was emphasizing the bronze feet because when I would look at, it, I, could, I could see like what everything else is talking about, except what the bronze feet were, mm-hmm. and I wanted to put it in that spiritual sense. And the way it was put, because I don't know if you, well, when you guys were talking about it, but it was the, uh, it was said that it was the rigidness in the word, right? Um, and then from that, from the from that it it came the judgment, mm-hmm. right? Because it would be, that that rigidness in the word kept you um, firm, and it would push people away or push people towards you because they were making that judgment, you know. And it, and it came to like the the end of days. I kind of I kind of get it. What you got? So going on to the bronze feet and. Tying that in with everything that the sister also brought up, the bronze feet is when you're in the world, it talks about in the scripture how you wash a brother's feet, right? Right. But his feet were bronze. They weren't going to be dirty. They're not going to be worn out. They're not going to be bleeding like ours. Refined bronze. Be, oh, okay. He's going to be refined. Dang, that's pretty bronze. He's not going to be hurt by the world that he's trotting through. Whew. This whole scripture. Oh, I love that. <laughs> as I the love that. Up Dang, with the candlesticks. Man. Yeah, that's pretty bomb. You know, this, which, whole, this whole thing covers the spirit. <laughs> that's the basis of. Would you guys come up? Yeah, would you guys come up? I just laughing because everybody has a different. Yeah. Yeah. No. no, no. <laughs> but I said this. I said, I said to me the bronze feet speak to me as that because we know we know. Uh, uh, the so logo was, 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 was perfect. Mm-hmm. He was, he was, he was perfect. Uh, and then the shininess of it was perfect. Because like, the color of the skin back there was bronze. Right? Mm-hmm. So that's how they envisioned it. Like, uh, his color, the color of the feet were bronze, shiny bronze. Okay. Right? But back then, back then and then, they, they, they got dark skin. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They had dark skin. So they, they, he probably seen it as the color of bronze, but it was shiny. You know what I mean? I told Simon Michael that I see it as uh, as he was speaking to his his his, 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 his humanity, right? Because the, the, because the gospel, uh, the the um, the armor of God, he said, shine your feet with the gospel of peace, right? So the gospel of peace, right? The gospel is the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, right? So he said, shine your feet with the gospel of peace, right? So the death and resurrection of Christ is when the Lord took the sins of on his back and he was put on the cross right now i asked the lord myself like lord why did you do it? and then and then I, 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 I took it back to the serpent on the pole right i okay. said why i was trying to wonder why would you compare why would he why would he tell the people he, when you see the man when you see the son of man lifted up like the serpent in the wilderness you will know that i'm you so why would you i was, I was trying I, I, so i said but why would you compare yourself to a serpent right why would you say if you see the man like the serpent lifted up? So if we see that the sins of the world were put on his back, we know that the sins of the world were on his back when he was on the cross. So he tells oh, he tells Moses he tells Moses uh, make make a make a serpent yeah. you know, pole and with it looks on it shall we say right? And, and then later on in the scripture it says that he made a brass he made a brass right. serpent. Oh, dude, this right? is getting so 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 when the Lord when you know that the Lord was on the cross. He was not only 100% man, but he had all the sins of the world. Right. So, right? So, the the, the serpent being a picture of the, 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 yeah, yeah. the spirit image of the sinful nature. Yeah. So, he says, if you get bit by the spirit, if you get bit by the serpent, and when you look at me, you're Dang, healed. that's so right? good, bro. So, <laughs> so when you're your cousin, Morty. <laughs> so, when you get, when you, so, to me, I see that he's saying, when you get bit by sin, you know what I mean? You look at the cross and see what I did for you, yeah. and know that the, your your sins have been forgiven. You will be healed. He didn't say you be. He say he said you. He say you won't you won't be sick or nothing. He said you'll be healed, right? Yeah, you'll be healed. So that, so that's what that's that's the that's what I see. That's why especially like I was talking to him in Ezekiel. Ezekiel sees the the image of God. He sees the four. He sees the creatures. Right. They also have the fruit of bonds. Right, and that's what Jordan brought up in Ezekiel was the, the they all had that that. Yeah. That bronze, mm-hmm. and that's where we got where it was back with what Nick was saying. Where, um, uh, 
Sorry, my brain just died. He's saying. Too much at once. He's saying. Dude, I'm, you just got unplugged from the internet right yeah, now. Right? Yeah. We're out of reset, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but um, it, it goes back to what 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 Nick was sharing with us. Right. You know, the, the, the... Put it in the same words that you, you said, Nick. The... About the strength that Christ had when he came into yes, this world. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was trying to like put it back yeah. in those same words, but so it falls back into that, you know, which I can see now. I can see because um, what they were explaining yet on Wednesday, where I kind of got it, it was just like, okay, so how did how did how did it get to there? Now I feel like the dots mm-hmm. were just all connected, you know. Yeah. And now 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 the bronze makes sense because you know it, it did save or it did it did mm-hmm. kill in that sense, you know. And that's what they brought up last time, but now it all makes sense because of the image of the serpent. Yeah, you know? Dude, it's so bomb, bro. Yeah. I love when God's connect like that. Start of it, it's kind of addressing it like how Paul does, how he is writing it, saying, okay, write this on a scroll for these specific churches. Right. Because they need to hear it, because they need to be encouraged in their spirit so they can grow. That's why they give such good descriptions of God right now on what he's like. The purity, also the fire in his eyes, and the rushing water. Because this is his word, right? Right. The word brings life, but he is the word. So it's reviving their spirits. Yeah, because they're going to realize what they describe. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Oh, man, that's so wild. I'm a dead man. <laughs> yeah, woe is me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is why water's so big, especially on Revelations, because of life and who Christ is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it also goes into the scriptures I shared with you over text, but you never read it. <laughs> Thank you, if I only knew. If I only knew. You want to show them right now? Uh, no, not really, but I can. <laughs> Christ is still Yeah. <clears throat> Dang, that was awesome. That so, was awesome. Yeah. So when Chris Chris says, yeah, yeah, no, he came out. Yeah, yeah. When when James were, three, start talking. Check this out. For real, I want to ask everybody because I want to hear everybody's opinion. Everybody yeah. asked about the bronze feet. So. Dude, I love. So it. what I said on Tuesday was bronze back then was used for uh, for sculpting weaponry and all kinds of things, mm-hmm. and I figured the refined bronze is the purity of it and taking down the idols of the world and the sin and all, everything that they used it for to create images before God, saying that they were greater and stuff like that. And it's at his feet because he's above it, you know. He was placed at the authority above it all. That's what yeah. I think too, because later, like, because in Daniel you see like the. You had this that his vision, remember? Uh, right, the Nebuchadnezzar, the Nebuchadnezzar dream. dreamer. And the vision that he got was of uh, the kings that were weak or whatever, like they were going to be destroyed. Their feet were mixed with clay and metals, uh-huh. different metals, iron and clay. Whatever. But but the metal always <coughs> represented strength, mm-hmm. and the and the weakness was the dirt, was the clay. And so and then it talks about the kingdoms, remember? And the last kingdom is the one that smashes all the others to pieces. It doesn't have any clay and it's just metal. Mm. So that's what that's why I assume like I picture Jesus as like his authority. He just said his yeah, all authority because he walks amongst the, the lampstands and has the candles. Mm-hmm. And he's about to talk and say, I know your words, I know what you do. You know what I'm saying? Like like we talked about in Zachariah right now. He sees everything. Yeah. He knows everything. And that's how he's judging with his power. He's a son of this. So crazy. Oh, dude, so so good. Good. What you got? Where are you taking us? Uh, James 3. James 3? James 3. <laughs> All over the place, my life. <laughs> <laughs> that was like one of the. What was it? I think when we, you, Jordan, and I were going over the Son of Man. Oh, that was another one. I, was I, didn't, I didn't do that one. Oh, no, you didn't do that one? What was the one we did together? Ephesians. Oh, was Ephesians about the breaking through? It was like how Christ was a straight shot to God, and he lived along, and he's like, no, "That wasn't me." Either. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Oh, dude, it had to be. You were right there. Yeah, it was like Ephesians two, dude. That yeah, was. that's. The, I think that's the only like massive breakthrough I've ever had in yeah. Ephesians. That was a good one. Mm-hmm. All right, James through what? Uh, starting at verse 11. 11? Okay. 
says, can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. Which goes back to what I was, what we were reading on Tuesday, right, with Ezekiel? Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. So, uh, 42. Yeah, 47. Yep, that's exactly what it is. You're going into... Dang, that's such a bomb too. Yeah, it's bad. <laughs> going into that, at our start, we're producing the salt water. We're producing what's in our nature, or sin. Mm -hmm. But we talked last week about submerging ourselves in the spirit. Yeah. It's removing that saltiness each time we go deeper in with the Lord. Funny. And we're starting to share that water of life. We talked about how in um, Jeremiah something, I talked about the cisterns that man tried to build themselves. Oh, yeah. Because by our nature, that's what we do. We go off by ourselves and do our own thing. Yeah, we think we know. Yeah, but that doesn't produce nothing. It produces the same thing that it always produces in the world. Just death. Man trying to do it themselves, not with God. But with God, we become a fount of light for the people in the world. We start to show them, share with them, and then they draw closer to God because that's what surrounds His Word and His Spirit, that we dwell in them. We become more pure and then it gives life to the things around us. I agree. I agree. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. You could also find the verses, John 7, verse 37, John 4, verse 10. Those also go with it. And then there's also spoilers yeah. in Revelation 21, 6. Mm -hmm. Which, fun fact, actually brought me to... Christianity. Oh, really? Uh, 21 6. Revelation, yeah. 21 6. Yeah, supposed to be a good verse, huh? Mm -hmm. Wait, 21 6. Isn't uh -huh. that in Fallout? <laughs> <laughs> I think. You said the Lord works in mysterious ways. Too. Yeah, doesn't it, bro? <laughs> 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 Our game is a complete testament on that scripture, just so you know. I know, <laughs> it is. Anyway, yeah. I think it is that verse, bro. Uh -huh. What a trip. What a trip. Do, 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 do. Did you guys read it? Yeah. 21.6. 21.6. Very bomb. It says, He said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give water without cost from the spring of water of life. Thank God. <laughs> It's free. Free. <laughs> yeah, what's more your cup that brings that water to the world and the people who need it? Amen. Amen, bro. Dude, I love you so much right now, Lake Nick. <laughs> so much, bro. That's all it is, being God's vessel. <laughs> <laughs> I was saying that in reference to what I said before, not me in general. <laughs> I'm hard headed sinner. Just in the word. Just in the word. I like what he said about <coughs> us being the light to other people. Right. And, and understanding that what the Spirit does, not just for you, but with those around you. Right. The Spirit in you. Reminds me of Matthew. It's, yeah, right here in Luke 10, is, I like this part right here, it says, when it says out to 70, it says, whatever city you enter and you receive such things, you were said before you was healed to sick, I say to them, the kingdom has come near you. That's what it seems to be. See, that's what I was trying to... Uh, Dang, that is deep, too. <laughs> yeah. That is deep. Like, yeah. the near you part is the people, bro. They came yeah. near you, and they show the word of God. <laughs> right? So... It, you know, it's no longer a place. You don't have to go all the way to Jerusalem now. Yeah, right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Amen, huh? Yeah. All right, so you guys ready to move on? On the two, yeah. On the two? 
the best part of Revelation? Because we live in it, right? All right, we'll start with the first church. And one thing I, uh, I tried to state uh, last time is that uh, um, if we're reading these, these churches, you know, and and you feel the the Lord convicting your heart, and you guys want to pray pray about it. We can stop and just pray about that, you know, like whatever the first church is, you know, we can just do it all all together, or you can do it by yourself. Um, it'd be cool if we had that all together, because you know, we can pray together, you know. But um, like if you feel some type of conviction, because because it said it's a, it's a double edged sword, you know, so it's going to convict you just as much as you, it convicts your enemy, you know. So. It says, verse 1, To the angel of the church in Ephesus, write, These are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks among the seven gold lampstands. I know your deeds, you, your hard work and your perseverance. I know that you cannot tolerate wicked people, that you have tested those who claim to be apostles but are not and have found them false. You have preserved and have endured hardships for my name and have not grown weary. That's all the good news, right? <laughs> all the good news. Dang. You know, if we weren't willing to hear, you know, if you didn't have ears to hear, you'd stop right there. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so let us have ears to hear, right? It says, yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken the love you had at first. Consider how far you have fallen. Repent and do the things you did at first. If you do not repent, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. But you have this in your favor. You hate the practices of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. Whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. What the Spirit says to the, the churches, to the one who is victorious, I will give the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in the, par which is in the paradise of God. Dang. Pretty heavy stuff right there, huh? 100%. It, Acts has when Paul and Barnabas established the church in Ephesus, I think, but they, when they get to the city at least. Right, is it like 15 or something? I don't know. I'm just like, clear. Oh, no, I think it's 20. Oh, it's I think it might be 20. Maybe. I want to say it's funny. That's the one where he's like, it's where, you, where they quote the Lord. It's better to be given than received. And they all cried and wept with each other at the end of it. I think. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, that's when you were saying goodbye to me. Yeah, that's, a, that's the Church of Ephesus you were yeah, saying that is. Yeah, yeah, that so is. it is. Pretty bomb. There's some of these, a lot of these churches aren't Acts when they went to the city and established them. Yeah. Mm, that's pretty cool. And a lot of these churches have letters to them. Even though they're not right. in in the Bible, some of them still have church, like letters oh, cool. to them. You know, like uh, Mike shared with me the the one chapter of La yeah, yeah. La Laodicea. Right, it was to three places. Uh, I don't remember what Laodicea was on. Yeah. Caesarea, I think, or Orlando. Sorry, the Orlando text uh, that is known as a Orthodox Church or Churches. I don't know exactly what I was talking about. Though. An Orthodox Church? Oh, I can see what, he's, I see what he's going with right here. So he's saying this is a type of church, mm. which I've also heard this one too. So this would be like the Orthodox Church just where they put the, the rules in front, you know? You can never down. Yeah, they put the rules in front and they forget what first saved them. You know what I mean? Because they came from those broken rules. Is that what the first works means? Because that was one of them. The what? Says, do the first works. Yeah. And consider how. Repent and do the first works. Yeah, the things that you. The, yeah, exactly. Which what was like. Them. Yeah, it's what it's pretty much what brought you to them, right? And usually, when you're when you're getting brought from the Lord, um, you you're in a terrible place, and then you realize, oh, I'm doing this all wrong. Lord, forgive me, you know, mm -hmm. you realize there's a better place, and, you know, and I can see the correlation as a whole mm -hmm. from that, that perspective is, um, uh, which is the Orthodox Church, mm -hmm. um, that if you go to these Orthodox churches, 
They have all type of traditions. And a lot of the traditions, you're like, why do we even do these things? But if you don't do these traditions, then you're not like a, you're not like a pillar in the church or, you know, you're, you're almost like excluded from the cool kids club. You know, like there's a hierarchy or something, which goes against and he goes, I hope it's against you, right? Come back this way, right? But we'll, we'll dive into it too. And uh, I can see that. That as a as a type of church, you know what I mean. This also represents some believers too. Like for example, in this church, when okay, you first came here, Jacob, you see the people who are sitting there like this, talking, but you didn't feel that movement, right? Right. So this is also a call to those believers too who who say, have felt it. Who are stuck and then fed and not oh, really okay, moving. I see. For the yeah. stagnant believers who would say, Yes, Lord, I know. I know your commands. Ooh, I, I like that one. Are. That was really good. So yeah. they're not moving. Right. They're just. Just when you were saying, like, oh, if any of this starts to get weak, like, I was just talking, like, I was just going through this, you know? Right. Like, I was trying to figure out, like, how do I get back to where I, when I first cracked open the Bible? Like, I want to go back to that, like, always wanting to run to the Lord, always wanting to read His Word, always wanting to figure something out, you know? And I threw myself out of loop, and then just reading this, it's crazy, because it's like, dang, like, I tell you all the time, like, I, I debate people all the time, you know? I talk to people all the time and stuff like that or whatever, so yeah, it's really, like, in your face about having a stagnant belief for sure because that's why it's addressed like how paul writes to the churches mm -hmm. because he's trying to reaffirm them to revitalize them to show them where they're at mm -hmm. and so that they could also keep in step with it man yeah to grow so and what you're talking about is what i get from this for mm -hmm. sure like i get that spiritual aspect 100 percent from this this is like when it's called the book of revelation i believe that the letters to the church are the revelation part mm -hmm. because like this is supposed to refuel the fire if you fall into one of these categories which most of us like i'm pretty sure 100 percent of us will fall into one of these categories mm -hmm. right we're all in one of them at, at some point or you know in all of them it just depends on where we're at i'm pretty um, sure two of the seven churches got only praise not reviewed yeah right That's a small spoiler it, it, it's small spoiler, area yeah, for sure, huh? So my dad uh, text, uh, Nicolosians may have been associated with a group of individuals who sought to establish a hierarchy within the com Christian community, possibly with an elitist or authoritarian group. Oh, see, like, I've heard, I've heard it different. I've heard it is the, the saved by grace, the people who chat, catch your chat in uh, full. But there's literally no writings I've looked for them. Mm -hmm. Um, only like rumors of like what the Nicolaitans would talk about, you know, what they do. And from what I've read from other places, is the Nicolaitans could also be the the ones that I'm saved by grace. I can do whatever I want, right? I can live in all this sin because Christ lived, Christ uh, uh, paid it all for me, you know. So that's what I've also read the, the Nicolaitans as. I mean, also you can take this in tandem. He uses the word hate for them specifically, yeah. which is also something that's not very common. Dang. It's really called the wake you up. Yeah, he, it, it's supposed to be like, and like that's, yeah. this is the Lord who is the same as today as it was yesterday, right? Yep, exactly. The same Lord. Mm -hmm. We have a my, uh, myriad of promises and word that we have to hold on to for our benefit. Yet, he's still the same. Mm -hmm. Something that he despises and detests, he'll call it out clearly, and he calls it out for this specific instance. So, yeah. yeah. No, no, I agree 100%. So let's start from the top and break it down verse by verse. Is Nicolaitans a religion or is it just a religion? So, according to all the writings that we have, I'm sure there were more before they were all burned away or lost or, you know, buried, one of the two, you know. Um, <laughs> uh, from what we do know is that um, the only real, like, recordings of what the Nicolaitans are are probably in this book. Those are, like, the few times they're mentioned. There's, I think there might be a couple more. I can't remember. I remember looking into it because I was trying to figure out the Nicolaitans were. Revelations. Huh? I think there's a few more times further in Revelation. Yeah, and they and, and 
Um, that's why I came to that conclusion where I think it's the saved by grace because if you mention it, wherever they're mentioned in these churches, um, uh, it goes along those lines of like, they can do anything, right? It doesn't always go along the lines of the elite, elitist, but like it could be that way, you know? But like we're established that way today, you know, that there, there are certain groups of churches where they have a hierarchy, right? Even the most uh, the most popular one, Catholicism, right? Mm-hmm. That has a hierarchy, right? There's a pope, there's a bishop, there's a cardinal, right? And usually, those people that are in those positions see it as like they're 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 closer to God than I am, right? Instead of realizing that they're just another person like you and me, you know. Um, so um, the Nicolaitans fall into multiple categories, you know. And after after reading the the writings that, because I get fascinated with stuff like that, the Nicolaitans. You know, I was trying to figure out what it was, but it, it, if you take the the writings that there are about Nicolaitans, you go, okay, it seems like they were just they they, they believed Christ, mm-hmm. died for their sins, but like there was like no repentance in in that that lifestyle. They they saw a so sin like, to a, play in a sect of people who just didn't. Yeah, they saw they really saw like, a sin to play in instead of like. Of like a place to overcome your sin, in, mm. you know, you know. That, that's that's my conclusion. I could be totally wrong. Because Revelation it says that it, that that certain church didn't follow the doctrines of the Nicolaitans. So they had doctrines that they're like a group that were teaching doctrines, almost like like different denominations now. They yeah. they exist because they have a certain group of uh, the doctrines that they follow. It's not just in here. They're yeah, on the stairs. You know. Yeah, they've dealt with the same thing even yeah. before Christ. That there was. Divisions everywhere, mm-hmm. you know. Whatever it was, it was, it was anti-Christ. Yeah. Whatever Jesus taught, they were doing different. Yeah, they were doing the opposite. You see it in Acts, like what Adonis, Sapphira, and Barnabas. Barnabas gave right. Adonis, Sapphira gave wrong. That was for the church, you know. Don't. This is how you give. This is how you don't give. Mm-hmm. An example. I forgot exactly what I was saying, but I forgot. Dang. <laughs> I was mentioning that. three, two. You're on a roll, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> About the Nicolaitans? Yeah, the, the doctors. Yeah, whatever they were, they were against Christ. And now, nowadays, you can see it. Like, if you read your Bible, then you see, like, I don't want to judge anybody, but if you see the church as a whole mm-hmm. and what people do, you're like, that's a strange doctrine. Yeah. Uh, that's not what Christ is. I don't see Christ like that. Yeah. I don't see Christ in, in, in a $50,000 car and a, in a million dollar home. Mm-hmm. Right. He doesn't live that way. <laughs> no, no, no. Right? It's like the yeah. opposite. My, you know? The disciples, the brothers, they don't do that. That's yeah. not who they are. I don't know. Yeah. It's strange, yeah. right? And so it could be anything that's anti-Christ. It's against what he taught and what he stands for. Because like you said, it doesn't change. Okay, so you're saying the Nicolaitans have that aspect of the anti-Christ. Well, well, yeah, and it could yeah. be any part of it? Yeah, yeah. 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 They weren't good and they were hated. <laughs> or, yeah, the, right? doctrines, the doctrines were hated. Yeah. I feel like, though, that you can just, the Nicolaitans, yeah. at that point, you just yeah. call the world at that point, you know what I mean? Yeah, true. So, um, they so, said that, like, is there another deeds? This is where he the deeds. Yeah, I hate the deeds. Whatever they were yeah, teaching, yeah, whatever right. it is that they were doing. Yeah, yeah. The whatever the their doctrine just, brought out of it. Yeah. Which goes back to why I think they were just, they believed who Christ was, they just but it. they were just like, I'm going to cash that check in full. Because in another one of these churches, a spoiler, is that uh, they put the Nicolaitans in. Uh, <coughs> Belzebul, mm-hmm. which is like the where they would have orgies at their altar, Whoa. all kinds of crazy Dang. stuff. So I'm thinking, I Balaam. Can, Balaam is Balaam. Balaam. Well, Balaam is one of them too. Yeah, yeah. but it, it like puts those two together. So you're like, okay, so whatever they were doing, they were doing the same thing as these because in the context they're keeping in with it, you know, mm-hmm. the same doctrine, you know. So like, I think they were just in their in that. Twisting the word. Twist, yeah, twisting the word, pretty much. Some worldly stuff. Like, yeah, exactly. They put the truth in there just like how the serpent did. Like, mm-hmm. you won't surely die when you eat that apple. <laughs> you know? Yeah, like, technically, they didn't, it, but they did. You know what I mean? <laughs> 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 so I think it's the same twist, you know? I remember in the book of Acts, they had that dude who was like a. He was a magician himself. Oh, yeah. He saw the disciples. Simon? Yeah, dude, stuck with the Holy Spirit. He was like, let me have that abide off you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he maybe believed and he maybe wanted to be part of the group, but his heart was different. In the wrong spot. Right? And that's what he tells them. Yeah. And yeah. that's what he would tell them, hey, repent and do what we do. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, These yeah. are the first words. They're not about right. that. We're not about the money. We're about the spirit of so, God. Right. Right. Amen. My brother said uh, he would like me to ask this to everyone. Um, do you know why there are there are seven churches? That's an interesting question. He didn't know. 
Do you know why there were seven churches? That's this question. Uh, in what context? Yeah, because yeah, oh, um, yeah. like, I'm sure there was like multiple. I thought contexts. it was the, the number of completion, and then it was like the forefront of where the letters went to yeah, to get sent that. out to the churches. Yeah. The other churches and if he has something else to share on, it, tell him to send it. Wasn't it because he promised? Yeah, 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 you just told him. <laughs> Did he make a promise to seven churches or something? Huh? Wasn't there a promise made for seven churches? Where at? Uh, I don't know. I just thought maybe. Now I'm going to go look into it. Thanks, dude. <laughs> Alright, so, um, verse by verse. I know well, we've been going I like, I like it too where he says, I know your works. I know I already said that, but yeah. that part just sticks to me. Like, yeah, no, no, I, I love it. Everything that we do, it doesn't matter. Nothing's hidden. Mm-hmm. Nothing is. Everything we say, nothing's hidden. Like when you're, when you're, when you're, when you're, when you're, what is it? Is that right when, when Joshua was in his dirty clothes, he, there's a rock in front of him? You know what I'm talking about? No, I don't think so. Joshua, you said? Yeah, Joshua? Yeah. Oh, Zachariah? When you, see, when you see Joshua with the dirty clothes, and he's in front of the Lord. You see the rock, and there's a rock in front of him. He the rock has a bunch of eyes around him. Yeah. Oh, it's all shit. Kind of like how the, uh, the, 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 like the wheel with all the eyes on it. The cherubim or whatever. Uh, yeah. 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 What my brother said about the seven churches. The reason that they saw was that they were unified. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I don't know. Um, <laughs> you, you need to call Jordan and have him elaborate on Oh, I guess if you put all seven churches together in the spirits that they're hold, I think that's what, what you've been going with it, is that it, then it would look like Christ. You know, if you put them all together, mold them all to one, melt down the lampstands into one lampstand, it would look like Christ. You know what I mean? Okay. And that's what is the completion? Because... Mm-hmm. Each one holds a characteristic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe, maybe in the big, <laughs> in the big scheme of everything, we'll see that that everything we have now came from these places. You know, came from what? For sure. These churches, these seven. Oh. Everything. All oh. the people, like we traced everything back, hey. like back. Like at the end days. Wind everything, bro. Like we can see everything. They all go back to there. Yeah, like, oh, <laughs> we'll see, one thing that I was tripping on back when we were <laughs> watching the when we were talking about the lamp stand with the olive branches and all of that, right? And like seeing it in the physical. But one thing that like it's just been going over and over in my head is like when we don't realize the things that we do, like it says, as it is on earth, as it is in heaven, right? So like when we do things here in the real world without our in the physical world. Some of the things that we do, like as far as like outside of God that people believe in, like sorcery, witchcraft, things and like that, you know, sometimes it's just like a stick in the jar and stuff like that, right? So, but what does that resemble spiritually, right? So, what, what I was just thinking was like with that description of what it gave with the lamp and the oil and stuff like that, with things being put together, like the way that he describes in Revelation, what he turns around to see, you know, it's just this weird thing of like. How do we know, like you're saying, we can go back to see where everything comes from, but how do we know that just normal things like don't actually mean something spiritually, you know, in a weird like sense, right? Like, I don't know, it was just really tripping me out what he was saying, because I was imagining, and I was like, dude, like, what if you just saw that, but you would not, you know, how, how oblivious are we to spiritual things that are right. Like, laying right out in front of us? That's you what know? he said, it's like white, it's white, it's snow, it's yeah. white, it's white, yeah. Yeah. Because we can't comprehend anything like that. Right, he's just our describing it in a way that we can understand. Yeah, right? we don't have that. Like a fourth dimension. Yeah. yeah. What is that? Yeah. That's yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that dude was in the spirit, right? Yeah, right. Check <laughs> <laughs> where? Forty-nine. Yeah, three days, three days, three days. Three nine. To hold, to hold the stone, the, the, the behold the stone that I laid before Joshua. On the stone are seven eyes. Mm. Behold, I will engrave its inscription, says the Lord, and I will remove the iniquity of that land. In that day, says the Lord, holds everyone going by his neighbor, 
under the vinyl on the feet. So that, that, and then also when you see the, you see the scripture of, of, um, of Ezekiel, in Ezekiel, you see the two wheels, the mm -hmm. spirit in it, they also have a bunch of eyes. Yeah, yeah. And it says where the spirit goes, the wheels go. The wheels go. They don't turn. Mm -hmm. So we know. They just ain't there in step with it. Yeah, but he's a forward mover guy. Too. Yeah. See, see, Joshua, he says, I might have stressed because you know, I'm paraphrasing. I might have stressed because you guys go backwards. Right? Yeah. yeah, so a lot, he goes, go forward. At least, you know, that she turned into salt, right? So he's a forward mover guy. So no matter what direction you go, he goes, he moves like this. He's a forward moving guy. No matter where he goes, he's a forward moving guy. Amen. And he sees all things because the eye, the, the wheels have eyes. Yeah, the wheels are covered with eyes. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, that, that's why I tried to bring up when you first mentioned it. Is the is that wheel? Yeah, the wheel. You know, that that wheel. wheel. Yeah, yeah. We had all the eyes on it. Crazy. Yeah. Can you imagine seeing a wheel without much eyes? Creepy. A lot. Well, the the they're all thing. seeing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> see nine. One is fifteen minutes. Uh, start getting your Thank prayers you know, and stuff like that. And then uh, my dad also commented um, that's why the parable doesn't make sense unless you see Christ. Um, come on, where did it go? It disappeared. <laughs> okay, we have to seek him for the deeper meanings. Okay. Right, amen. We only find it through the scriptures, right? Yeah. Because man will lead us astray. Yeah, like me, you know, I'll lead you guys astray, so don't listen to me. Go to the word. I, I, like I was just saying, man, I'm totally stop leaving this trip. I want to go back to what you were saying. What you were saying, I kind of like what you were saying about how. Like in the grand scheme. Oh yeah, like, you we know. don't know. You know, we just know that they just that they were there. They had to play a huge part. Yeah, like right. all of us here today have like inherited something from what well, we absolutely. live in. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So like, in the grand scheme of it, that yeah, you know, can you ask yourself, is that you more than the sun? Yep. Right. I agree with you one hundred percent. Just like with repeats itself, like you said. I'm going to say bad chance thing, dude. It's like, hey, why are we no more than the sun? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Think about now, right? We read the letter to the Galatians. Right? We're not the Galatians. Those guys are already dead, but we still get life from those letters. Amen. The yeah. Corinthians. All of the all these are churches that were letters written to them, but we still read them and we still have the Spirit of God in them. They're, they're going to be around forever. Yeah. They're going to outlive us. We are. Well, that's what it says, right? We're like we're like flowers in the grass. Or the sun, the yeah. right? But but the word never fades away. Never fades. Yeah. It's been true so far. Huh? So mm -hmm. far. That's why, I like, whatever the translation is, like, I, I mean, you, re you read it, you yeah. get you get the spirit from it. Yeah. It is what it is, you know. Like, you got it, bro. It doesn't say something else. Yeah. You know. I'm sure there's some crazy ones out there, but I've read all of them. I've only read like five, maybe. Not scriptures be open, no? My favorite one is the Hawaiian pigeon. His <laughs> one and only boy. Not again, brother. Not again. <laughs> Nick says. Oh, you're not supposed to read that right now. Oh, yeah, we don't. don't you pay attention right now? All of a sudden, you already ignored the last one. Hey, yeah, it's because I was called out on it. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'll read it later. All right. Ezekiel three, if anyone wants to. Ezekiel three. Look into it later. <laughs> <laughs> See, don't trust men. <laughs> <laughs> it says that in the scripture too. They're hard-headed. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Oh, well, that's what like when you brought up uh, you guys go backwards. You yeah. know that must that must have, that has to be so frustrating. You know what I mean? <laughs> Come on, guys, you just gotta keep going forward. It's all coming backwards. <laughs> so that's what we do first, all day. You know, the first five chapters of Hebrews led me to that. Yeah. Like, yeah. By the time I got to six, the way six starts with the with the, the elementary teachers of Hebrews, oh, yeah. I was like, oh, thanks. Yeah, it reminds me of the, <laughs> yeah. this way. I think it's Corinthians. Fish yeah, 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 yeah. meat now. Stop Gosh, drinking the way the chapter milk, five ends, and he's like, "You guys so all need milk, and you shouldn't." And I'm like, "That, <laughs> that looks, <laughs> looks crazy." All right, all right, all right. Man, this is a good study, then. All right. So, we'll start with the first verse. See what we can get. I'm sure we we covered a lot of this. So, 
Mm-hmm. It says, to the angel of the church in Ephesus, write, these are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks among the seven gold lampstands, which I think somebody brought up, I think it was Nick maybe, where um, the description that was that that John gave mm-hmm. was for the reader who starts out like the church to recognize like oh this is this is Jesus who's mm-hmm. writing this to us you know what I mean so when that first he says these are the words of him who uh, holds the seven stars it's to like you know, uh, yeah Jesus has got words <laughs> to say for you now yeah. but and this is the part where I like I, I really get like well, this is where the revelations at because when we get through all seven churches when we take heed to what is being said we it, it, it's revealed mm-hmm. right like oh man like i need to i need to step up my game you know i need to get back with god you know stuff like that that's that 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 revelation you know mm-hmm. there's more there's more that could be the revelation. but i i see the true revelation is in these in these in these church letters mm-hmm. because it's jesus telling us who we're in because we're it's the now mm-hmm. right hasn't changed yet we haven't got to the end Unless you believe that the Millennium Kingdom is already reigning. You know what I mean? Um, but, you know, that's enough about conspiracy theories. <laughs> yeah, I, believe, I believe right now in that third spot. <laughs> my dad texts me. Wait, holds the stars. <laughs> so my dad texts me or commented. He holds the spirits and walks among the church, the bride. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> And then verse two, right? We get into the, the phrase, right? Mm-hmm. I know your deeds, your hard work, your perseverance. I know that you cannot tolerate the wicked. That you have tested those who claim to be apostles, but but are not, and have found them false. So they, you know, they got down and dirty with their word, right? It kind of reminds me of the Bereans, you know, in Acts. I love this guy. You know, where where they where uh, <coughs> Paul would tell them something, instead of just taking it, they they went back to the scripture was like, Oh wait, that is true. And then they start living. You know I mean? mm-hmm. and like, a lot of people just rejected his words and were like, Yeah, whatever. Yeah. But they didn't. They're like, all right, we're gonna see what they're gonna see. And that was good enough for them. Right, and that's how I feel like some of some of these works are kind of like that. You, know? like you have to you have to really dig deep to figure out like you know okay I see your works because you know now you, as you dug deep you're now living it because you know, it's hit you so much more right. And then, um, at least that's what I get from it. What you get? I think leading into context, like, just, like you said, it's a phrase of like uh, who comes to Christ. Like that's all of those things right there. You know, it's with with the when you catch on fire, it's like you put in your word, you go to your labor, your patience is like, tested a lot, and then you start to, in a sense, like in our human nature, start to like look at everybody, like why aren't you doing better? You know? Like you hate wickedness, you know. And evildoers and stuff like yeah. that. See, like, I see that. And then as you come, come, it's coming to your faith more, and you come to meet people with Christ, and you're like, wait a minute, you know, you say you follow Christ, but you, you don't really, you're not really like what I'm, what you're supposed to be doing and whatnot, you know? You're walking differently. Yeah. Yeah. Blue <laughs> cover the rebuke. Yeah, right? they they have that. I see a discernment, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Like full okay, discernment yeah, there. Like, mm-hmm. You know, like it's not like they're judging people. They so, just they have discernment. And they go, okay, I stay away from yeah. that because I can't stand that. You know, but I think you like, need patience to get it because you know, it takes time to sit there and really read some and not well, not just read it, but pray and pray. Like, come on, give me that clarification. I know you're speaking, but it's it's not hitting sometimes. Right, you know? right. So it, eventually, the more you you ask for it, the more you continue to read it, even if it's the same passage over and over again. It becomes embedded in you to the point where, yeah, you start seeing it everywhere, and you recognize who has it and who doesn't. And it's not like you're judging; it's just it's clear as day. Like you know, it's it's more of a correct your 
your your brother or um, well then we can go yeah yeah so versus you're, you're paying yeah. attention to what yeah exactly what, what, what I also see doing. I also see what he brought up earlier with like the the bronze serpent when you're saying that like, you'll be you what was it healed. Yeah, or you'll be yeah, saved but not healed, yeah. right? Like so, like that also brings in like yeah, yeah. the the patience and like healed, all these other healed, healed. Not saved. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They don't say saved; they say you'll be healed. Oh, right. Okay. You know, so yeah. Like you're saved. Mm -hmm. And just you know, it, when you come to Christ, like it's exactly that. Like you're you're saved, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you're not going to go through things. You're not going to labor. You're not going to have hardships. You're not going to you know. Yeah, you're going to still have that sinful Neither. body that like it talks about in. Romans six through eight, right? Mm -hmm. Because, uh, says we wage our own wars, we right? Our exactly. Just the body and our mind. Yeah, yeah. We, we go we back and forth. Wage our, we wage our own wars. We cause our own turmoil, mm -hmm. right? And we fight against your spirit. I think that the things I want, do, I don't do. The things I do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know if it's Orlando or Jackie, but um, Mercedes Church is promised that everyone who conquers will be rewarded by Christ. The seven churches are the representation of. It seven different periods in the history of the Western Church from the time of Paul until the return of Christ. Right, and that goes back to that. I was talking about that the interpretation. The eras, but there. Yeah, the eras. Yeah. Seven eras. So the, that's what I'll tell you something about I read about that. Yeah. Remember the, it comes from the names. You did yeah. the Greek name. You did the Church of Ephesus. It has a yeah. name and a meaning. Right? Yeah. This is right. the Church of whatever. Yeah. That's where it comes from. All right, verse 3. Are we ready? All right, it says, You have persevered and have endured hardships for my name and have not grown weary. You know what that reminds me of? Second Timothy. Oh. Yeah? Oh, exactly. Second Timothy, right? Where he says, You've got to fight the good fight of faith. Right? It's that, that long endurance race. Right? When he's talking about the racing, as you're running to win, right? I mean, these guys had it bad. These guys had it bad. Oh, really yeah, bad. They had it bad. Because, because, like, if you could imagine, they are Jews. A lot of them were Jews. Pharisees also. I was reading Acts. They also became Christians. And they're being persecuted by their religion. You know? That is that is still yeah, their religion, but it's not their religion, but it is. Yeah. They should be united, but they're not. Which yeah. they're being persecuted by their own. And not only, like, oh, we hate you. They're being locked up and yeah. killed. Right. It reminds me of that letter to Diognetus, right? Mm -hmm. With that one of the... That, that persecution, um, with that being happened, uh, the person who wrote that, which I don't know who it was, um, wrote that letter and said, and used it as a, as evidence that God's working because mm -hmm. they're, they're getting persecuted yet they're growing. <laughs> How is this not evidence that God is, God is doing something, you know what I mean? That's in Acts too. Remember the guy who's like, if this isn't from God, then it'll come to nothing. Because yeah. all these other guys have came and said there was somebody and they're coming nothing, and their followers have became nothing. So if if this is from God, let it keep happening. They're also going to find yourself fighting against God. Yeah. And that's what you said. After the first century, it's still growing. Yeah, it's still growing. And now it's still growing. Yeah. <laughs> well, trying to reach, reach everywhere. Right? Because we're going to have patience because so this thing is things are going wrong. Go to the Bible beside it. Do it. Yeah. I like that. I have patience. As you were saying, get into the Word and persevere. So it takes a lot to, to, to understand. You know what I mean? To, yeah. to, get, to get through it. And, and, and I think, I think, I believe God, the Lord don't show you right away because I believe He wants to see your diligence. Your diligence, right? He wants to see how, if you're going to if you're gonna keep asking, keep seeking. You know what He says? Seek. Mm -hmm. And you shall find. He didn't say if you look, you're gonna find it. And he said, seek. Right. You know, you gotta keep. You gotta keep. You gotta. You gotta, you gotta get in it. You, know, you, you gotta, gotta get deep. You gotta get frustrated. Like, Come on, Lord. I read this thirty times. And then it changes. And then it changes. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Oh, man. Then again, Lord. You gotta do it. Amen. Right. Hey, what you're you're saying is Hebrews. God is a rewarder of them who seek and diligent. Right. Continuous, so just keep keep looking. Like, like if it was like jewelry, and then mm -hmm. buried in the ground somewhere, you know, some gold. Oh right, that's that parable, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's worth more than that. Yeah, yeah. it's worth that, more than all the rubies in the world. That parable of the guy who sells his land. Or oh, the kingdom yeah. of God. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The pearl, the pearl, the pearl, the pearl or something. Yeah. The land. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sells everything because yes. it's nothing. Right. It sells everything. Like if you only knew, bro. <laughs> <laughs> something like this world, bro. 
<laughs> you put your car, you put your house, you put your body. Yeah, yeah. You turn the dust. Uh, Jeez. You don't want to keep going, bro. Too bad. Get your prayers in. All right, everyone, get your prayers in. We're going to call Jordan and he's going to pray us out. Yeah, let's face it. Yeah, I'll probably... <laughs> <laughs> Come on, dude. That's a good job. No, let, let us be one together. <laughs> Who's going to write it? Huh? Who's going to write it? Hey, give me a piece of paper. I'll, I'll write. I'm going to write it. I'm going to write it. All right, I got something to write with. I got it. There you go. So important. Hey, sticky notes. Yeah, you want to do it? You want to do it? Oh, no, I'm okay. I'm okay. It's like five degrees. That's called a deal. Wait till you get a little further. I, I, said, I said the same thing, bro. I said the same thing. Trust me. What about too much after? Yeah. Too much after? Yeah. Yeah. You should be there. You'd be like, all right, I guess. I guess we'll have a friend. Maybe they had to do it like this. Alright, Felicia? Is there an update? <laughs> no. I <laughs> haven't reached out to her today, so. Yeah, I'm gonna do a job for her. I know she's. Oh, sorry. I'm always scared. He's good. He's good. He's good. Yeah. I think he's already in vacation mode. He's already counting down the days. And then next year he starts homeschool, so. He's already in forever home. I'm not counting down the days from my uh, It's like the same time, right? Same time frame, like two weeks? Um, about less than two weeks, because it's the 21st. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Counting down the days in one week. Mm-hmm. 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 All right, any other prayers? <laughs> my uh, surgery coming up. Surgery coming up? Keep the Nick in prayer. For who? Nick. Who? Nick. Mm-hmm. Nick? Oh. Work. Work. Yeah, he finds work. Better work. Your surgery, right? Mm-hmm. Your surgery? Did you said you surgery? And then work for Nick. So the pen is not as fast as I am. Well, I write the word and <laughs> nothing's coming out of it. <laughs> Oh, uh, Jordan says prayer for my more friends. This is one. She said my mom had a surgery. My mom had a surgery today. Yeah, I heard it was it went, everything went well, right? Yeah, she said. Uh, Roger says pray for his finances. What was the, the, the pen surgery? Not as fast. Uh, I don't know. I'm like right knee twice. It was a laser surgery for. Uh, what did you say? Which one? Removal of, of stuff, right? The latest yeah. one. Uh, Rogers. Rogers. Rogers finances. Right? Yeah. And then pray for Eric that she's not here. Jordan says. Who does? Jordan. Oh yeah. <coughs> what do you love about being alive on? on Facebook there. Right? <laughs> Everyone can see exactly what you're doing. <laughs> How many people on there? Uh, four. Mm. What'd you say? Class? Except for Eric, and Jordan says yes. Memo surgery went very well. Oh, Tina so surgery. Ah, oh, Tina surgery. Amen. Hey, it worked out. Yeah, right. Text me something and reminded you of what you said. <coughs> All right. Anyone else? He prayed for my cousin. He's gonna go on an adventure. Ooh, an adventure. I love it. Like Abraham. 
Yeah. <laughs> call me. Call me. Call me. Good thing I'm not like the stressing like type. next step for you, no? That would be the next step. Yeah. Dang. Well, what's it called? But like, I get it why like no one can get a hold of them. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's like you said. I want to not stop ringing, bro. And you just, you just don't start working. Good thing I'm not like the stressful type, you know? Because I the the person before me was stressed out too much. And you step down, and I'm good, bro. <laughs> you know, and Insane. I kind of see it as a challenge. At first, I was like overwhelmed, but now I just kind of get there and I go, wow, this is another characteristic of this job title. <laughs> <laughs> it's, good. It's, real, it's real fun. It's like a challenge. Mm-hmm. But, uh, like. As long as your, your heart is healthy, you're like, yeah. stressed. Nah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just joking out at I'm sure if, like, <laughs> like, like a year ago when I first got the position, because the guy who stepped down, he was stepping down for a while, he came to me, he's like, well, if this doesn't work, I think I'm going to close up shop, because, like, this is too much, you know, what he's dealing what he's doing with. And like I've only had like a week and a half of it. Mm-hmm. You know, and I'm like, holy cow, it's been this for years, twenty years, bro. Like it's years. crazy. Bro. I closed up shop <laughs> But it's something I, it's it's one of those what I've noticed is like when I first got in the position and I got overwhelmed or something like that, I'd freak out. <clears throat> and now now I've gone through the steps so many times where I, I don't know, I, I don't freak out anymore. I just was like, all right, well, this is another thing I just gotta, you know, get over. <laughs> <laughs> that experience. Yeah, yeah. It's, I love it though. He asked me, he's like, you need anything? I was like, nah, dude, thank you for taking care of me. This is life, life lifetime opportunity. I love it. Yeah. So I'm pretty much work. <laughs> Make sure everything's going good. Heavenly Father, um, we thank you for this uh, Bible study, Lord. It has been, it has been awesome. And I thank you so much, Lord. Lord, it's awesome to see you work in others as you work in me, Lord. And I can't praise you enough for it. Uh, I first want to start off this prayer and, and take heed to this first letter that we read, Lord, and, and help us repent and come back to our first love. Uh, and Lord, uh, uh, in, in doing that, Lord, uh, I want to pray for Felicia's family, Lord. Uh, uh, help remind her family that, that you're with them at all times. That you, you show themselves, you show you show yourself to them. Uh, I know some people are more realistic than others, and Lord, if you have to do something really realistic and physical, uh, do so, Lord, so that they can see that you're working in their family as you as you work in every family, Lord. Hopefully, should be the beacon of light that she's called to be for her family, so that they they too can uh, and enjoy the the company of God. Uh, Lord, I want to pray for uh, for Jacob's surgery. Um, help ease his mind. Help him. Help him to when he does think about it. Lord, help him. Help him to understand that this is this is this must be, and, and, and set ease and peace in his mind so that so that uh, when he comes out of the surgery, his hips fine and he can walk and run around. Lord, uh, help help the the surgeon's hands. Uh, and it not just be a paycheck to him, but something that he loves, that it's in his heart, that he wants to help help people in this way. Lord, I also want to pray for Nick. And uh, Lord, I see you working all in in his life, 
all the time. And it's awesome. And Lord, uh, uh, help uh, help Nick uh, see where he's supposed to go with work. Uh, bless him, bless him with the job where he can shine his light, Lord. Um, not only for for just the, for his comfort, Lord, but for for others to to see see you work through him. And and Lord, uh, I'll pray for Memo and Francis. Uh, we thank you for the praise that that you uh, that you've done, Lord. I I would follow along. Um, in my prayers, and this is probably one of the coolest, coolest, uh, coolest works that I've seen you do in my life. Uh, taking a man who's very sick and, and healing the Lord. Uh, I thank you for that, uh, and I thank you for 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 Memo and Francis, and, and and bless them, Lord, through this time. Help them see what you're doing in their life and learn from it. Because we don't just go through these things for nothing, Lord. I also want to uh, pray for uh, Roger and his finances, Lord. Help him help him get what he needs. Uh, I know he struggles, Lord. And, and uh, help him rely on you and not worry about these things. Because uh, we know that Ro- Roger is more than just birds, Lord. He's a, he's a son of God. A child of God, and Lord, um, I want to pray for Eric. I want to pray that uh, that you keep him on the the path, Lord. I know he, I know he's not walking super straight, but he's he's walking near it, Lord. And uh, and we thank you for that. We thank you for where you brought him. Uh, we thank you that you brought him to us, Lord, because we love him like a like a brother and uh, and remind him remind him through that walk that, that you're with him you know and, if, and help him help him rely on you in this walk uh, Lord I want to pray for um, Tina's surgery coming up uh, I'm glad that she got a second opinion and, and she found a doctor Lord that is willing to do the work that it takes to, to remove uh, what she has going on inside her, Lord. Uh, we thank you for that that enthusiasm. And Lord, let this not just be a a uh, a form of pride in that surgeon, Lord, but let this be the, the the work of you, Lord, in his hands and in the way he carries himself, Lord. Uh, let this be let this be carried out in a way that uh, follows your will, Lord. Uh, Lord, I want to pray for Mike's cousin. Going on an adventure, Lord, and uh, I pray that you uh, you be with him in that, and that he sees that throughout the entire adventure, Lord. Um, also, Lord, um, I'll pray for for work personally. Um, sometimes it gets a little overwhelming, but you know I love it, Lord, and, um, and I can see that that while the the owner's gone, Lord, that that it's not just uh, falling on my shoulders, but um, it's running in such a way that you it feels like you're running it, Lord. And I thank you for that. Um, bless the workers. Bless Travis. Bless Colby. Bless Joel. Bless Ricardo. Bless Eli, Lord, and and uh, all the people that just came on board, Lord. Uh, I want to pray that the the owners of the company they uh, they enjoy their vacation because I know they need it, especially after what. What they they they've handed off to me for now, Lord, and uh, and I thank you for that. I thank you for the blessing of that family that's blessed my family, Lord. So have them enjoy their vacation, uh, and all these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Did you, Roger? Yeah, I did. Yeah.